Hello, my name is Kevin Jordan. I'm the superintendent of schools here in AOS 94 and SAD 46. I've been fortunate enough to be superintendent in this district for the last 13 years, and we've got some really exciting things going on, and we're going to bring you up to date on one of our major projects today. Um, off and on over the past 20 years, regionally, we've had conversations about education and what can we do for kids and how can we best serve kids in rural Maine. Opportunities um, have come along from the Department of Education, allowing us to apply for a regional project that we began work on about a year ago. Um, S84 and S8046 agreed, uh, believe it or not, in a very short amount of time to combine in a consolidated high school with post-secondary opportunities, essentially creating a nine through 16 facility um, serving students in our public high schools and adults in the community. Through a rigorous process, uh, the committee has put together part one of our application, um, which was due last May. And fortunately enough, we were approved to move on to part two of the application, and which we are currently involved in right now. Part two of our application is due the end of December and we are winding down the draft process now and we're involved in some public meetings and also this video to help you folks uh, learn more about our exciting project and um, allow you the opportunity to ask questions if you see us um, or to participate as we move forward hopefully with a successful project and part three. Uh, part three of the application if we are fortunate enough to be approved would happen sometime in the spring of 2018. From that point on, if, if we're an approved project, we would be developing a new school uh, design, um, structures, size of the school, location of the school, and um, some of those nitty gritty details um, that are part of the traditional new school project application in the state of Maine. One of the things we're really excited about is the opportunities for students in our area to attend a state-of-the-art facility uh, in a comprehensive manner, meaning we would have vocational education opportunities and more traditional academic opportunities under one roof with considerable integration of projects. For our area, one of the real benefits to that is students in grades <clears throat> 9 and 10 will now have access to vocational programming that's not currently available in the state of Maine. <clears throat> We're hoping that this will uh, create opportunities for kids in our area. We're also hoping that through partnerships with higher education and local industry, we're going to be able to make a major impact on the local workforce in this area. Uh, we'll know more specifically what local industry needs and we'll be able to tailor our training, our certifications, and our licensures to be able to support many of the local businesses <clears throat> who have come on board as part of our project. Just a few of those businesses um, that most of you probably will have heard of, uh, Chinbro Corporation of Maine is part of our project, Mayo Regional Hospital in Dover Foxcroft, Hardwood Products uh, in Guilford, Pleasant River Lumber in Dover Foxcroft, Maine Automobile Dealers, um, just to name a few. So we have several industry partners that are helping us with this project. We have uh, our local Piscataquis County Economic Development Council that's helping us with this project. Um, we believe it's an opportunity for us to make significant impact um, on the workforce uh, and the area, the rural area of Maine. One of the exciting pieces is we're working with our higher education partners, uh, developing programming that can be offered on site um, in our new school. At this point, the University of Maine at Fort Kent, the University of Maine at Augusta, and Eastern Maine Community College have agreed to offer programming in our new facility. So we're excited to have in-face classes, uh, in-person classes uh, on the site, as well as some online programming from these universities and as I mentioned before, would certainly help with our dual credits for our high school students, but also for our uh, graduates 
who have an opportunity to stay in their local community and achieve some sort of post-secondary education. In part two of our application process, uh, we've been very fortunate. We have a significant number of school board members, uh, administrators, and local community members from both SAD4 and SAD46 who have agreed to a very busy schedule, including multiple meetings per month as we put part two of our application together. Um, on our district website, uh, aos94.org, you could certainly follow along with the agendas of all of the meetings that we've had. And that's also a great place to just learn more about our project. So you can get to this site uh, from the SAD4 website or the AOS94 website. I also have one additional piece of exciting news that I would like to report. As of December 6th, the SAD41 school board in Milo voted unanimously to join our project. At this point, that gives us three school districts, uh, SAD46, SAD4, and SAD41, that we can now have on our application that we present to the Department of Education. And we anticipate that that will be uh, met favorably by the review committee. Thank you.